Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Just a quick video this week where I show you some of the recent Galaxy images that I've taken with this camera, the ASI 2600 MC Pro. Now I didn't actually record anything outside when I was capturing these images because I didn't think the data was gonna turn out that well. All of the, um, the images or the three images that I'm about to show you were captured with the moon over 65% and it was a one-shot color camera. I wasn't using any filters at all, no light pollution filters, no narrowband filters, so I wasn't really expecting um, much from the images, but I'm actually quite pleased with how they turned out, so I thought I would share them with you now. So let's jump into the computer and I'll show you the three images. Okay, so this was the first image that I managed to capture. This is the Owl Nebula and the Surfboard Galaxy. And I was really pleased by how well this, this target came out. So this was shot on a night where there was a 65% moon. Um, like I said, I wasn't really expecting much from the image. I didn't really think the data would be usable, but it's actually produced an image which I'm quite happy with. Um, and I love the, the two different targets in the frame. At 1000 millimeters, I just about managed to frame it well enough to get, get both in. I think I could probably have done with shooting slightly wider, but um, I managed to, to save it, I think. Um, but I just love the distances involved as well. So the, uh, the Owl Nebula is obviously inside our Milky Way. It's about 2000 light years from us but the, the surfboard galaxy is 45 million light years away and I just find those distances amazing still. It's not the most detailed image of the Owl Nebula you'll ever see. I think you really do need to shoot it in narrowband in order to pull, up, pull out all of those details. You can just about make out the, the eyes that give it its, na its name. But I'm quite pleased with the, the details managed to salvage in the uh, surfboard galaxy. So yeah, that was the first image I, I managed to capture and I was uh, quite pleased with it. So this is the second one. Um, this is Bode's Galaxy. And now I've shot this before um, when I framed Bode's and Cigar Galaxy next to each other. But I thought I'd um, just focus in on Bode's Galaxy and try, and try and get a detailed image of that. Now this I'm not so happy with at all. Um, and one of the main reasons is that I forgot to take any flat frames. So normally I take flat frames after every uh, night of um, imaging, but for some reason I actually forgot to do that. And there are a couple of dust spots on the image and you can just about make them out here. So there's a big one there and there's another one down here and they actually eat into the edge of the galaxy. And that's why when you look at this image, you probably think it's actually quite over-processed because I really had to... Um, bring down those blacks in order to hide those dust spots. Um, so yeah, if you're going to take images, you might as well take flat frames because that would have solved all of these problems. But I managed to manage to save it. Again, I was really surprised by how how much detail actually came out in the image because this was captured um, with a moon of about 75%. So I didn't think any of this data would be usable, um, but there are still some details in this image in the, uh, the dust lanes of the of the galaxy. Um, I didn't spend too much time processing it because of those massive dust spots, so those that, that data's never gotten gonna be amazing. Um, but I thought I would show you guys anyway. And then the final image, which I am really impressed with, considering this was taken when there was an 89% moon, and this target is about 85 million light years away. This is M109. So a small target in the, the frame really distant galaxy, um, like I said, 80, 80, I think it's 85 million light years away. And even under a 95, uh, an 89% moon, I was still able to pull some of the detail out. You can see some, there was some gradients going on, so you can see a little bit of um, the light pollution coming in on the edge of the frame, but I'm really pleased uh, with how well this image came out. I wasn't expecting to use any of this data, um, but yeah, it turned out okay. And I actually ran this image through the um, annotation software and pick insight. And I'm just always blown away by how many distant galaxies you can see in, in these types of images. So 
there's over 30 galaxies, I believe, in in frame here, and the some of them must be um, huh, billions, I guess, of uh, light years away from us. I need to work out how to actually tell how far away these distant galaxies are, but it does always uh, blow me away when you see so many different galaxies in frame. Okay, so I hope you like the images. Um, please let me know which is your favorite down below. Um, I've been absolutely blown away with this camera, the 2600 MC Pro. I didn't expect to use any of the data I captured um, over the last few nights, but this, uh, this camera has been absolutely fantastic. It's been great all the way through uh, galaxy season. I've get, captured some amazing images with it. So um, it was a great investment and I would highly recommend it for anyone who is looking to buy a one-shot color camera. I'm gonna put it away now and get the mono camera back out and shoot some of those targets, some of those narrow band targets, which are slowly making their way back up into the summer night sky. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Um, please do hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>